In 1955, the construction of Nagarjuna Sagar Dam began. It led to the submergence of the entire Buddhist civilizational valley of the Krishna River. The spade of the archaeologist has uncovered the ruins of ancient cities which once flourished in Andhra Pradesh. Amaravati, Dagaya Peta, Bhatti Prolu, Ghanta Sala. Among the most famed was 2000 year old Nagar Junakonda. The ancient Andhra Desh had about 400 Buddhist sites which are recorded today as the Buddhist sites. Now we are heading towards the ancient site of the Nagarjuna Konda. The waters of the Krishna River have been flowing through the valley of Sri Parvatam for centuries. Here in lonely grandeur was born a great civilization. Not much remains of Vijayapuri, the stately citadel of the Ikshvakus, a powerful dynasty which ruled these parts during the 3rd and 4th centuries AD, that is after the decline of the Shatavahana kings. Nagarjuna Konda during the reign of the Ikshvakus was a center of art, research and scholarship. From here and from Amaravati, the art of Andhra spread to neighboring lands in East Asia. The ruins of Nagarjuna Konda like so many in India are silent. Who built these noble edifices? What was their exact purpose? At Nagarjuna Konda so much of the past lies concealed. This model shows the submergence of the entire Buddhist civilization. Here taught Acharya Nagarjuna, founder of the Madhyamika school of Buddhist philosophy. The university with its pillared halls and chaityas is imposing even though nothing remains but the faint outlines of its grandeur. Students from all over Asia came to the university to Acharya Nagarjuna in search of knowledge. The immortal Buddhist divine ruled the church for 57 years. and spent the evening of his life here the gospel so brilliantly interpreted and so in vigorously taught by the great nagarjuna made a profound impression on recluse scholar and artist
unstintingly they gave their treasures to adorn the city of Vijayapuri with innumerable stupas, chaityas and viharas, that is, shrines and monasteries. Something of their generosity and their faith can yet be seen. The most imposing of all the shrines was the Mahachaitya, which embodied the relics of the Buddha. Its building was inspired by the greatest of the consorts, Mahatallavari Attave Shanti Sari. The structure was embellished with these votive pillars, raised in groups of five at the four cardinal points. With a diameter of 106 feet, the Mahachaitya was probably 80 feet high. The Chaityas went into the complex of the monastic establishments and were designed for the worship of congregations. many monasteries in the valley. They were built to an accepted pattern. In these monastic cells, members of the order meditated on the life and teachings of the enlightened one. In this pillared hall, or mandapam, which existed 2,000 years ago, hundreds would gather to partake in religious discourses. On the slope of a hill to the southeast, there lay what we now describe as a quadrangular stadium. It is believed that here, the people of the valley, in their thousands, used to congregate and pay homage to the Buddha, raising their voices in prayer and dedication.
the age of Nagarjuna Konda was a golden age. It bridges the passage of time, beckoning us to a just society, free from caste and cruelty, to a new world above hate and strife. It yielded the first outline sketches of long ago, the lines that gave life to the stone of the valley. Loving hands and rare sensitivity, the sculptors of Nagarjuna Konda 2,000 years ago told the story of the Shakya prince, the enlightened one, who pointed the way to truth. <laughs> Lokasya punyeh 